Welcome to episode 25 of the Library TechCast. And this uh, whole month and the next couple of shows, we will be talking about library automation. Um, specifically today, we'll be talking about <coughs> self-checkout machines and, um, you know, their usefulness, how hard they are to set up, maybe even the cost. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Jeffrey Sable. I'm currently in between positions right now, but I will be starting shortly at Marymount California University. They were a two-year college up until a few years ago, and now they are a four-year university, even offering a Master's of Business Administration. So that'll be fun to get in there, and I'll be doing a lot of systems and uh, electronic resources with that. Um, I'll throw it over to my co-host, Riley Childs, and he'll introduce himself. Um, hello, my name is Riley Childs. I come from Charlotte, North Carolina. I am the library dude and library cataloger and everything, and I'm a high school student at Charlotte United Christian Academy who is intensely interested in libraries and all the things that go on in them and all the bits and pieces that go together to make them what they are. Um, I'm... Uh, it's the summer here. I'm actually working my way through about 8,000 library books, getting them put in the catalog. I have a hard deadline of August 10th, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but, I mean, I've been working on, and, I, and if you don't mind, Jeff, I want to show off my work. I've been working oh, yeah, on, yeah. on this awesome, uh, our, our iOS is based on COA that uh, is currently run in-house, and um, this is just... Can you see that? Um, yes. Oh, it's so, oh, so you even have a quote of the day up there. Yeah, I found a nice big, um, I found just a nice, I think it had like 50,000 quotes in it, so I'm set for life. Um, it's <laughs> just going to choose random quotes, and I mean, the only, and there's just a few little kinks, like the location column doesn't show anything, but there's a, just a whole bunch of little stuff that needs to be worked out. Um, so, 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 talk about your quote of the day. So, what do you mean you have fifty thousand quotes? Um, it just rotate there. I found a big Excel file just filled with um, quotes, and Coa takes in a uh, will take in that Excel file, and then it will rotate through all those quotes uh, every day. It will be a random quote. So, so theoretically, yeah. anything in an Excel file you can rotate. Um, yeah, yeah, actually, you probably could. I. That, I actually never thought about it, but you could rotate through, theoretically, anything you wanted. So you could have a whole bunch of... So you could have, like, the message of the day from each professor or teacher or something, you know, words of encouragement of the day. Yeah, or, basically. Or, or, you know, wisdom passed down. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it looks like it's pretty much endless. I wonder how, I mean, how uh, hard that would be to do with, um, with WorldShare or with uh, um, OCLC ILS. I mean, that's, you, could that's probably, pretty cool. you could probably just embed like an iframe or something into that. Um, and then, so you have a program that pulls it in. It's a, what yeah, was the program written in? Um, just have a little PHP script. I mean, this is integrated into Koa. I mean, but you could like have a little PHP script or Python script that just pulls from like a MySQL database, and then it just says it just everything is a timestamp or something. And it, I don't know how Koa does it. I'd have to look into it. All I know is that you could probably have either a random quote or it could somehow just know depending on what what um, yeah I don't know you could probably you could just have a little iframe and then it would just rotate through and that would be a PHP script right on right on yeah that's that's uh, yeah. pretty cool yeah um, yeah but that's built into Koa um, but yeah I mean that's just what I've been looking at I did some little CSS stuff that was pretty fancy and it took me a little bit to figure it out but I got it working. Um, but I guess on to our main, uh, I guess, topic of the day, um, self-checkouts. They're those wonderful little boxes that are in libraries everywhere. And I'm not sure, but I, I'm fairly, like our entire library system down here is moved to self-checkouts, or mostly. Um, but I mean, yeah. Jeff, do you have any self, uh, what's the self-checkout situation or at your old at the old place 
at the old college well, used to work at. Yeah, well, every everywhere I've worked, checkouts have either either. I mean, you, last the place I worked, there was so many student assistants, you know, that get paid eight bucks an hour, and they're already at the front desk anyways. Um, so I mean, there's really no need for them. Just because, I mean, the rationale of justifying, I mean, it's not like you're at a public library where you're paying someone, you know, <clears throat> a, a wage with benefits and stuff like that. And at yeah. the law at the law library, the another place I worked, um, it, it, it's mostly a research library. So um, they actually had bought one, but it was never implemented. But, I mean, the checkout is, is so low, and you're already at the front desk, um, you know, just doing other things, filling ILLs, helping answer questions about where books are, grabbing out of the reserve section that's behind the desk, um, booking, you, you know, um, study rooms, stuff like that. Yeah. That you already have someone behind there, and the checkouts are so low that, I mean, I don't really see a justification for it. They do at, at the LA, L.A. Public Library and L.A. County Library, they have them everywhere. And, I mean, I think it makes sense where before you had someone just sitting at the desk and their sole duty was to check out books, and, you know, it's pretty economical and, as well as um, convenient for people to go up and check their books out themselves. So yeah. I mean, at the L at the LA Public Library, there's always a line to check out the books with the the front desk clerk or the librarian. But there's rarely a line at the self checkout machines. And I mean, that goes pretty much everywhere. They had just opened um, a new branch two weekends ago, the Santa Monica Public Library, and it was the exact same thing where you know the self checkout was self checkout machines weren't being used. Um, and I mean that's a pretty prosperous library district. I mean you know Santa Monica's uh, you know pretty pretty uh, civic minded as well as um, you know like upper middle middle class. So I mean they have a huge public library system with many branch libraries, and I think <laughs> staffing those where before I mean you do lose some personal interaction where maybe you know you could ask for recommendations when you're checking out, but I think that um, it really allows people to, you know, and, and the library system to, to fill a need that was definitely there. And, and that's, that's you know, paying someone full-time with benefits to just check out books. Yeah. And I think this, and I'm sure there are people that might disagree with me, but this is the typical um, layout of a self-checkout. I mean, this is what the one from the main um, entrance that our, that the main main branch of our public library down in Charlotte looks like. I mean, you got two touchscreen monitors and things, and I mean, it's pretty it looks pretty straightforward. I'm sure it's not, but you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I find that. yeah, I mean, I find them really easy to use too. You know, yeah. I mean, it's not like they're that complicated, and even if you have like at the grocery store, they have usually one attendant for four or five machines. I mean, even yeah. that, you're, you're really utilizing your personnel. Oh, yeah, 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 because you're, I mean, uh, Harris Teeter down here has those at every single store, and there's one store where I think the soft checkout machines outnumber the actual checkout lanes. Um, right, right. Yeah. And, um, and, I mean, it's just about utilizing your talents. What could, what could those same library staff members or even librarians be doing instead of checking out books. You know, it's, they kind can, of, it's kind of like writing a script uh, to do something. Why waste your time doing that automatically when a librarian could be out doing something? Right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> so you, you are planning to, are you planning to implement a self-checkout machine or, or not? I, yes, we actually got a um, an touchscreen donated by a wonderful touchscreen company called Planar. Um, about a year back, uh, and this is what our and the Koa actually has a very nice uh, self checkout feature. And I am actually going to show that off because uh, what is it? Oh, maybe I need to do this in Firefox. Hang on one second. Yeah, but I mean, uh, we are planning to implement a self checkout, uh, and it's. The one in Koa is actually very full-featured for what it is. I mean, you got 
and but then again, a self checkout really isn't all that much. The only so, dis- so how how do you how are you going to desensitize the bugs or, or deactivate the security device? We don't have security devices. Oh, oh so that, I mean that that's yeah. really the hardest part. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I when I was well, even when I, uh, back, you know, ten years ago when I was in uh, yeah. undergrad at San Diego State. They were just implementing self checkout machines, but we had to go back and re barcode every barcode on the outside of the book so that when it was scanned yeah. by the self checkout machine, A, it could scan the barcode, and B, you know, it would be in the right place where the it could demagnetize the security device. Well, the public library actually does, here doesn't have, I think, last time I was at the main branch, they had uh, the security gates um, and they had security. But I don't think they have those anymore. Well, they, I mean, they I might have moved to our RFID. If that, I remember they said they were working to implement that, but I don't think they ever actually did. I think they just got rid of all the security altogether, and it's more. Yeah, um, but what, what, like, what stops people from like walking and taking books though? Nothing. I mean, I'm sure. Because I mean, there's always someone at the at the reference desk, and the library and the checkout machine is either at the reference desk or somewhere else in the building. I don't know. There's really nothing stopping someone besides being a bad person. I just <laughs> not really. I never really thought about it like that. But this, hang on. This is um, this is Kelly's self checkout. And like you put in your thing, yeah. You put in your um, little barcode. Let's see. Put it in. It loads. You scan your book. I don't have the. I'm just gonna say got to be 81. Implement that. Put your little barcode there. Oh, look, you're checked out. Click finish. Okay. If you'd like to print a receipt. And there you go. All nice wow. and fancy. Right on. And that's 100% integrated. And in, um, we're actually using. I'll put a link to it in the uh, in the description below. But there's fire. There's a kiosk based on Firefox that I like a lot, and we're using that. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to turn out pretty neat. Um, but there, there's a lot of different uh, vendors out there, as one might imagine, that are on this self checkout bandwagon. Um, but let's start with the open source projects because those are the best because they're free. Right, right. Um, and I don't think I. Uh, well, I mean, the Co is the, you know the major one, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Of course, this one, this one is of course Co. This one in particular is open source. But I was just showing that off. That's what ours looks like. And we've done a little bit of modification to it to get rid of some of the things. But uh, yeah, there we go. This is called Open Source Self Check and oh wait, here we can watch a little demo video here. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, but that, I mean, that's just what it looks like. It's its pretty, uh, looks pretty nice. And I tried setting it up, and it was just somewhat difficult to set up at one point. Um, kind of, it was something to do with Koa's SIP settings. And uh, I guess we should touch on that. Um, do you know, Jeff, you know uh, SIP? Uh, whatever it is, session information protocol, maybe. I know. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I've I've heard of it before. I mean, but uh, yeah, it's something with which self checkouts. Right? Yeah, yeah, and library automation in general, and it's uh, and it's really confusing because when I heard of it first, I was thinking of SIP as in voice over IP. It was really confusing, and I got I'm really confused because I tried to interface with something that wasn't possible. Um, but yeah. Uh, basically, it's this—it's this, it's this uh, 
interface that 3M released, and it's actually released into I don't I don't know what standards body does it anymore, but 3M manages it. They wrote it. They wrote the implementation guide, um, and it's I think it's oh, I believe it's open source because it has to be. Um, but well, I, I think I think their motivation was that they they were one of the first manufacturers of a self checkout machine, and I mean the machine is basically, you know, I mean you could build it yourself except for the desensitization of, you know, the security device. Yeah, and I have a feeling that, and I have a feeling one of the reasons 3M released this publicly and all that stuff is because that way, seriously, Dynex just isn't building. Um, building 3M integration into their ILS. They're building integration in for all these different checkout kiosks. And I'm sure right, lots right. of people have figured that out by now. I mean, because that, that's just what, that's, cause what's the point of building it for one vendor, one really, really expensive vendor. Um, but of course, now let's talk about 3M's offerings, because they are the, they are the name. Um, You can buy. Uh, they have the their RFID stuff. Then they have their. Let's try this. Uh, okay. Yeah. And this is just kind of like a. Um, this is just the like I guess the. Picture of what their their uh, 3M checkout looks like, and it looks like it could be customized and all that stuff, uh, and all that good, great stuff. But basically, I mean, they have their software, which you can get, and then they have their uh, and they have their hardware, and they just looks like they've got a lot of different fun stuff. Uh, yeah, and I, I think they were one of the first. Um companies that that entered the self checkout market because yeah. i mean you know realistically most libraries have security devices and i think you know matching up the patron and then you know having safety protocols in there to make sure that that's the patron that's checking out those books and also those books are being um <clears throat> you know the security device is being de deactivated i think that was the big um question is if, if, if a, a machine could do all those things. And I mean, of course they have. And I mean, the next frontier is is RFID where, I mean, I've heard people talk about it where if you have a card and you that has an RFID chip and if you have a book with you in a, in a proximity and you leave the library, it'll automatically check out that book towards you. And one of the um, big... Um, libraries that were was one of the first implementations due to theft is um, the Vatican library and yeah they, they, yeah yeah and that their motivation was basically and you know you figure um, the main the main user population of the Vatican library are um, you know Catholic priests of some sort or or theologians but they they were having a huge problem with uh, they called it missing items, but you know, I, they, it basically was you know people were taking stuff and not checking it out, and they they went from I think a ten percent. Uh, don't quote me on that, but they had some sort of percentage, but it was almost down to zero once um, they fully imp implemented RFID, where theoretically you could go and you know use use um, some sort of program to go and locate that specific book. You know, anyway, you know, even if yeah. it was misshelved, which is, I, I mean, I think it's phenomenal. I don't think it's realistic just because the price tag is so high for most um, most libraries to implement. And, and talking about libraries that didn't have security devices, um, my first library job out of um, college was at uh, the Palos Verdes Library District, and it was in a historic library, and all the books had security devices on them, but... Um, local patrons and, and the community didn't want the historic architecture to be ruined by ugly, you know, 3M security gates. <laughs> <clears throat> so I, I, all, all the other libraries did have did have those um, security devices, but that one, you know, they just didn't, didn't feel it was necessary. And I, I, I never, I didn't work there long enough to really, you know, I was only there a year, 
But, I mean, they said that, you know, missing books due to, you know, for whatever reason, was about average to the other the other libraries. So, I mean, yeah. theoretically, if you're in an upper um, middle class, upper class community, I don't think it's that much of a problem. But if you go to, like, downtown, the main library in downtown L.A., um, you know, I don't think if they didn't have security devices, I think there would be <laughs> major problems. Of, of, you know, I mean, maybe people would return them, but I think there would be major problems of people not checking out materials. Yeah. See, yeah, maybe the main library down here has checkout gates. I'm just not seeing them in the picture. I've been down there a while, so I can't say for certain. Um, but, yeah, I just lost my train of thought for some reason. Um, so we're 3M. So, uh, 3M. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think the price tag's a little a little high for 3M check. I mean, you know, if you think that most colleges do have student assistants that are paid through a lot of them. I mean, mo almost all of our students were paid through work study. So those are they're getting yeah. grants from the government um, to yeah. pay them, and so they're basically free to the school or the university or the library. And, um, I mean, even if not, you know, how many people can you find to pay no benefits to that, um, you know, they're not going to become an a, a employee who's there for 10 years and who's so dissatisfied with their job of just checking out books. I mean, you know, you have a good turnover. Every four years, they're gone. You get a new batch of highly enthusiastic workers for, you know, really pennies on the dollar. Can you really justify getting, getting a self-checkout machine? Yeah, and I mean, it wouldn't really make s sense in an academic setting, but I mean, it definitely would increase. I would imagine that self checkouts maybe drive down theft. Who knows? Drives uh, down what? Maybe, uh, well, just walking out with the book, I guess, is what oh. I mean. Oh, well, see, also, I mean, easier. how, right, so I mean, you know, you're getting all these students who could care less about their job. Uh, the, the driving factor at San Diego State was that a self checkout machine doesn't make mistakes. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so whereas yeah. Jeff Sable, the the twenty year old college student who has you know two finals that day and a million other things on their mind, and the last thing they're thinking about is is you know checking out books. If they miss a book or two, and it goes out the door, you you can really prevent yeah. that with the self checkout machine. And I mean, if you're really worried about that, and you're a really big library, I mean, I I would love to see more bigger research libraries go to RFID just to sort of um, push the technology along and really drive down the price, so it, it becomes an option for everybody. But I mean, theoretically, if you have that, your your loss is o less than I think like point oh one percent or something. Yeah. <laughs> So I mean, it's really driving down, and, so, and I mean, I feel it's the best um, option right now. I mean, it, we're disregarding the price. Yeah, and I think, and what I meant when I said, I think that you're right. Uh, rather than maybe having two librarians that would be doing checkouts, you can have for the price of the library of, what, I don't know, you could have uh, more self checkouts than you could have than you could also feasibly a possible librarian. So it's not only cost savings that are going down, it's being able to provide a better better services and more and be more convenient. Absolutely. Um, I just wonder, I mean, I since I've never really dealt with it, I'm just wondering how much manpower it's going to take to keep it up and running. Because, I mean, yeah. someone has to, you know, do the updates. If your ILS gets an update, I'm, you have to make sure that you're... Um, well, I think since it's, it's standardized information protocol or self, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to confuse it with the VoIP one. Um, I would assume since SIP is standard, it's going to be standard between um, all the different... Well, isn't it now SIP2, though? SIP, yeah, SIP2. I mean SIP2, yeah. I guess that's what I should be calling it. SIP2, because it used to be SIP, now it's SIP2. And I think that's standard on everything. COA supports it. Um, I would assume, of course, 3M supports it. Um, and it seems that a lot of... I, I don't see any reason why you might need to perform an update besides, like, security updates, but since the standard is open and it's a standard, it should be the same, if I'm not talking myself into circles. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, like, I have no personal experience. I can only go off of, like, listservs and stuff. When I was on the triple I listserv, there was always questions of, you know, we're classifying new books this way, and they're not coming up right on the self-checkout machines and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's oh. definitely, I mean, there's definitely some, um, main, I mean, I, there has to be some maintenance, just, you know, I don't think it's just plug and play. And if it was, I think that, um, the law, because the law library that I worked at bought one for mm -hmm. untold amounts of money, and they never implemented it. So I mean, I, I mean, there wasn't really a need, and I don't know if someone said, "Hey, you know, that we should get this," and le then left afterwards and never really implemented. But I mean, if it was really that easy to implement, yeah, and we, were we were using Triple I uh, Innovatives Millennium uh, ILS. And, and I mean, they're pretty much plug and play. And I mean, there's a big support system, but you know, that never got implemented. Oh, yeah. You know, it just sat in the basement for years and years until finally, you know, it was pushed into a closet. But I mean, there has to be some. I mean, everything, everything has some sort of, you know. Yeah, update. I get, you know, I guess to a certain extent. I mean, if the that little PH oh, PHP. Uh, check out open self check was a pain to get set up, and I never actually got it working. So there is to a certain extent that is correct that they're difficult to get working. But I mean, if you are going to get a self checkout, I mean, it's so you could yeah you you could tell us how much how much um you know maintenance and if it really is pretty much hands off where once it's set up you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, as far, from what I can tell, and yeah, and. I remember what I was going to say. Um, I remember there was a posting on Code for Web this past week. Um, I remember you were talking about RFID. If you got RFID, then you could get book drones. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I didn't see it. I should look back. You I didn't see it? Was, yeah, there, there was this whole long thing. I, I think it actually got started. I don't remember how it got started. It got started at book drones. Um, there were all sorts of when You could track down lost books. You could go find patrons who didn't return their books. And then there was a, something about long-range near-field communication, which is an oxymoron. So that was, I think, I think long-range near-field communication is also known as RFID. So, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, like the possibilities are really endless, you know, when once you implement yeah. it. I think it's just the, the hurdle of committing the money, the time, <laughs> to really, you know, because yeah. I mean, it's expensive and it's time consuming. Yeah. Someone has to go in and and put that chip. It's got to be figured out. Yeah, it's got to be figured out. It's right. kind of like it's it's not quite as difficult as having to put uh, maybe like put a book in the system. But I mean, if you got it set up right, you could have a little reader in your barcode scan. You could say, oh, scan the barcode, encode the tag, and just put it on the book. I guess or right. But I mean, you know, someone thing. someone has to do Someone's that. Someone's got to do that. Someone's got to do that, and that's what, that's where it gets complicated. On to our next vendor, or kind of. I did this when I Googled. Um, I found them, I guess, when I Googled their name. I didn't Google their name. I Googled Library Self Checkout, and they were like the third third company that came up. I've never heard of them. They have a decent looking website. Not that the website is any judge of the functionality. I've never heard of them. I've never talked to anyone that's heard of them. Maybe someone has, and I'm just totally out of it. Um, LatCorp, have you heard of them at all? I, I, I have heard of them before, but I don't yeah. know anybody. Yeah, I don't know anybody who's actually implemented them, but they're at, um, they're at conferences. If you go to, uh, um, like, ALA or CLA, California Library, I mean, they're, they're, I think, a known company. Yeah, they got a whole but, bunch of stuff. I've just never really heard of their stuff. And I, I and I think they're coming in as as a lower price point than 3M, where 3M's the Cadillac service of self checkouts. This this is um, you know a little bit smaller company, and I think they price them a little bit lower than um, than 3M. But I mean, don't quote me on that. And if if you work at um, a uh, uh, library that's implemented any of these uh, self-checkout solutions. We'd love to hear from you and come yeah. on and have a, have a chat about not only this but uh, maybe library automation as a whole. And then, I mean, this is just one component to really embracing how technology can allow 
librarians to perform some of the more more uh, essential functions that that can't be performed by by a computer or by a program. Yeah, and I mean that that's really that's really what this is all about. That's really what automation is all about. It's making it people. It's all about the people. And yeah, I mean I've never really heard Lat Corp. I uh, that's because I'm not I haven't heard or I haven't seen everything. Um, they look new. That's what I can tell. I know that they. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, it looks like they've got a whole a whole diff bunch of different product lines. Um, I'm sure someone's gonna. I don't know. I would like to hear from someone that uses this. If anyone is listening or watches that uses this, please let me know, because I would like to find out. Because it looks kind of neat, semi neat. They're all uh, 3D renderings, so we're not really sure if they even exist. Um, <laughs> And they, uh, they don't have they don't have prices on there, do they? No, they don't. I don't think 3M has prices either, though. No, no, no yeah. you don't want to do that. I think I think they're like so outrageously priced. I mean, to the you know smaller libraries that it's just you know it's a shock. Yeah. Okay. And next up is Envisionware. I think if you've ever worked at a place at a library, I would imagine that you've heard of Envisionware. I do. They do. Is that another company that does the, um, I'm trying to remember, there was a, oh yeah, I think they're the people that do the computer control stuff. If you've ever, I know that the public library here uses them, they, they have the uh, smart PC or the PC res reservation system. And then they've okay. also, and they've, then they've also got their printer stuff. And if you've ever printed anything at a library, I would imagine that you've heard of them. Um, I've, yeah, I've never personally heard of them. Most, um, well, the universities I've worked at use uh, paper cut for printing, but um, oh yeah, I've, yeah, I know. I know that some of the public libraries, have, a lot of the public libraries I've been to use Envisionware. Um, okay, yeah, but yeah. Maybe I it's mean, just a location thing. And I mean, uh, who knows? I mean, the um, the public libraries here may be using it. And I mean, as far as like you know, those smart boards. They're, I mean, I think they're just now being embraced in academia. Yeah. Because I, I don't know who did the one for uh, Thomas Jefferson Law School. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, I don't know who did them for Thomas Jefferson Law School, but, I mean, it was really nice. You could get directions to restaurants from the board. They had class schedules. Um you know, pretty much real-time information. They had, like, a little news channel up in a box. And, I mean, we're talking about this was, you know, a huge display, probably a 70-inch um, screen. So, I mean, it's, you know, big, big, big. This thing looks cool. Handheld PDA for barcode. Oh, how I would love to have one of those for my 8,000 <laughs> book collection. <laughs> my tiny, tiny collection. Um... But it looks like maybe uh, this is like what you have at your station. It looks like they make a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, one stop. I think that is this. Oh, yes. Here is their self-checkout. Um, it looks like this is uh, they've got the, yeah, this is the whole, this is the whole caboodle. You've got your RFID thing. I mean, your RFID desensitizer. Uh, you've got everything. You've got your security. And, and I think I think our RFID is really um, making it a lot easier for self checkout machines. Oh yeah, yeah, because then you don't have to worry about the barcode being messed up. Because I remember, uh, I don't remember where I heard it. Oh, I think it was on a code tutorial that um, they said make sure that you that the uh, no, that the book number is on the barcode because the barcode is known to just wear away. And I think RFIDs. Problem. It's just one of those things. It's one of those one of those things that's gonna make it all easier, and then you yeah, don't have to worry about. You can just slide the book on the thing. Don't have to worry about what the barcode is. RFID, I think, is coming into its own, and it's it's like the computer catalog was. The computer catalog of yeah, I guess. That's yeah, a, I that's mean, it's probably I mean, a horrible yeah. analogy. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, I think it's yeah a little bit late because. I mean, especially with with uh, academic libraries, everything's moving online, you know. Yeah. Whereas, and, and the physical collection, while it's still used by students, I don't think the the value of the book is is similar to where people want to steal it when it's free online, you know. 
<clears throat> I just think that there's a lot less um, demand for for books in general for print books. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, and I, I, I mean, especially college students, I mean, they're going to online databases for articles. Almost none of them are going to go over to the microfiche section or or the actual physical printed periodicals and thumb through them. Um, yeah. And I think, I think, I mean, it's still in the early stages with books, but I mean, ebook collections, especially at the new library I'm working at, I mean, the ebook collection is, is 200,000 books, whereas the print collection, I think, is like less than 50,000. And they're just really focusing on the electronic, where, I mean, it's less maintenance, um, it's easier to use for students. If you have a multi campus, um, University, you know, you, you the one central library library is pretty inconvenient for people on, uh, you know, maybe a campus across across the way. I mean, but uh, outside of academia, I think it's still with habits uses. I mean, RFI. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, acad academia is one very very special place because of many many reasons. Um, <laughs> as far as libraries are concerned. But I mean, as far as public libraries are concerned, the, the uses for RFID are infinite. And even in, I don't know, I mean, it's, there's just a lot of change going on right now. It's interesting to see where it's all going to lead. And I don't know. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, any, any um, technology allows you to better, better keep track of your books. Yeah, not just exactly. not just for not just for theft purposes, but you know, misshelving books is is common. You know, where you really have to go out and look for. You know, you're spending some time going out and looking for books that people that patrons can't find. Where you know, ninety percent of the time they're just misshelved. And I mean, I'm yeah. sure that's I'm sure that's a huge problem in in public libraries, and I mean, it's a problem in academic libraries as well. And I know, and I can give a personal antidote to, uh, there There was once upon a time, there was a time that I checked out a book, I read it, I returned it. Uh, somehow it missed, the I, when I returned it, somehow it missed the, um, the barcode scanner whenever they checked it in. Because uh, a month later I looked and I saw I had like 10, I had a queue $10 in fines and I was like, okay. Um, and then I looked again later on, and I had like fifty dollars in fines, and it was because the book never <laughs> got checked in. Now a month later, they found the book on the shelf. Um, so you know, it. I mean, yeah, and that. And I, mean, shares. I mean, that's fifty dollars that someone would have had to pay if they didn't. Yeah, I mean that that was fifty dollars I would have had to pay if they never found that book. Right, right, and I mean, and it yeah. also solves the problem of the patron saying they had returned it when they actually had not. You know, it works both yeah. ways. But I think, yeah. it, it's, I mean, that's just one problem out of out of the thousands that it solves. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think it's just you know how much does it cost to implement, and how much uh, manpower does it take, and once the cost and the implementation manpower is down, um, you know, I think, I think it's really gonna. Um, flourish in the next 10, 10 years. Well, you know what? We are nearing the end. Um, but I think next week we should definitely focus on RFID. We should find someone or in two weeks because we're on a bi-weekly schedule now. Uh, now. Yeah, so, so we'll, we'll, yeah. What, what will that be? We will, today is, week it is, so we will be back July, uh, August 2nd or August 1st. One of those right, two. and we're always we're always looking for guests too. So yeah, if, uh, yeah. if if you want to talk about library automation in general, or or RFID in particular, we'll we'll happy to have you. Of, reach, out us, reach out to us via email info at librarytechcast.com. Reach out to us on Twitter. We're at librarytechcast there. Um, I mean, feel free to just reach out to me or Jeff uh, if you have any questions, or and we are going to discuss RFID in depth, understand how it works. I don't know if we could find someone, an engineer from 3M or someone that could talk to us about it or someone who could tell us the magics of RFID. Uh, but, you know, Jeff, where can we find you on the beautiful interwebs? 
I am on Twitter at LA Library Man, and uh, you can find me on my personal website, uh, jeffreystevensable.org. I think you forgot an O. Oh, oh did I? <laughs> you did. So that's, yeah. My bad. Um, well, oh, yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> we'll redirect there. I'll have to get a redirect. Well, I'm just <clears throat> figure it out. Yeah. Where can we find you, Riley? You can find me on RileyChilds.net and on Twitter at RowdyChildren. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that's it. Oh, yeah, also next week we will get to learn, if anyone's interested, we'll get to learn about Office 365 for Academia because we're moving there. We're going to see how that goes this week, and I'll report back on that because... I'd like to share about that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, for the Library Tech Cast, I'm Riley Childs. I'm Jeff Sable.